down there putting in a shelf it's cockeyed don't tell me how to build a shelf lawrence didn't i do all that work on the barn back home now it's a barn when you started it was a mansion (laughs) Uh, i was on the air all night and now i've got to go and work all day what kind of a fool works all night Even both ends of a horse get to sleep at a reasonable hour. Pop, the all-night host quit. I filled in and did Morgan a favor. Boy, never again. Old Roger Biddle, back home, used to drool when he talked. He worked day and night just like you. Finally killed him. Died at the age of 87. Right smack in the middle of his honeymoon. Well, at least the flowers didn't go to waste. (laughs) Look, I'm off to work again. I better get dressed. Hi, Grandpa. Oh, hi. If you're going to ride that thing in here, don't ring the bell. Your father's a little testy today. Okay. Where are you going? Oh, I got to borrow some tools from that old coot down the hall. (laughs) Diane, before you start complaining, I had to bring my bike in the house. Complaining? Why should I complain? Well, you usually do. No, I understand why. Two bikes have already been stolen downstairs. Diane, why have you been so nice to me these last few days? <laughs> I'm your sister. I love you. Do you know something I don't? I mean, do I have a fatal disease? Am I going to die in a week? <laughs> Hi, guys. Can I never borrow a cup of root beer? Sure, Tommy. Take anything you want. <laughs> What's the matter with her? <laughs> Take anything you want. Is this Diane, or is it a happy clone? (laughs) Why are you being so nice to Tommy? Does he have a fatal disease, too? I mean, what happened to the old Diane who's always complaining about not having enough room? Tommy, I think you better come back later. Something's wrong with Diane. What's everybody so surprised about? I'm a new Diane. You see what I mean? She's got some kind of virus that makes her be nice to her sister. (laughs) Make her feel at home, Diane. Wrap her in the mouth. (laughs) Oh, uh, by the way, I picked up your mail. Not a bad batch for a dull family. (laughs) That's what it is. She's expecting a love letter. Ooh, here's a letter from Mom. Addressed to Dad. I wonder what's in it. No problem. We steam it open. (laughs) My father's letter? That never stopped my mother. (laughs) You know, Diane and I hear from Mom all the time. She never writes to Dad. Must be real important. I hope it's what I've been waiting for. Diane, is there something you're not telling me? Or me? (laughs) Tommy, this is none of your business. It's a miracle. She's well again. (laughs) Hey, uh, have you guys seen my briefcase? Yeah, it's right here, Dad. Oh, thank you. Hey, Mr. Alder, I'm glad you're here. Saves me the trouble of seeming open your mail. (laughs) Well, anything to save you trouble. (laughs) Yeah, you got a letter from your ex-wife. Must be important. She never writes to you. (laughs) That's uh, part of the divorce agreement. (laughs) You mind? It's kind of private. Okay. I'll go take our mail upstairs. It's addressed to occupant, but my mother will steam it open anyway. (laughs) Here it is, Dad. Open it. 
Yeah, I will. It must be important. <laughs> she never writes to me, as everybody in the building seems to know. <laughs> oh, it's a check for $100. Oh, there's too many zeros. It's a thousand. It's $10,000. $10,000? Oh, Dad, can I see it? Oh, I never saw so many zeros. Not even on my finals. <laughs> oh, I wish you could see the look on your face right now, Dad. Dear Larry, I would love to see the look on your face right now. $10,000. You know, that's exactly 5,000 allowances. I thought about coming up there and giving you the money in person, but I know whenever we get together, the sparks fly. And that's 3,000 babysitting jobs. <laughs> Let him read. What else did she say, Dad? Um, ra raising the girls alone can't be easy. Larry, I made some extra money. You might even call it a windfall. So please accept the check. I'm only doing for you what you do for me. Please, Larry, use the money for the dream house Diane is always writing about. Marion. The, the dream house Diane is always writing about? Diane, well, what have you been telling your mother? It's truth. I don't have any privacy. Ruthie doesn't have any privacy. Even if Grandpa leaves, we won't have any privacy. Oh, funny. You have enough privacy to write a lot of letters nobody knew about. <laughs> now we can get a dog just like Rusty back in L.A. And I promise I won't let him eat the pillows. And I promise I won't let him mess up the living room. And I promise I won't let him chew on the furniture. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't get a dog like Rusty. <laughs> with a sexy voice asked me to change a light bulb. Boy, did she make a mistake. I changed the bulb and saw what she looked like. Grandpa, Dad just got a check for $10,000. Who died? What do you think? Who looked bad the last time I visited him? Pop, my ex-wife just sent me $10,000. Boy, you must have had one hell of a divorce lawyer. <laughs> Mom sent us some money so we could buy a house. Good. Now you get your own room, Lawrence. Yeah, Dad. Hey, wait, wait. Look, girls, uh, give me at least 45 seconds to think about it. What's there to think about? Why I ever divorced her. <laughs> Don't worry, Diane. Dad won't turn it down. We'll get the house. Get yourself a fixer-upper. Hey, girls, did I ever tell you about the barn I built? <laughs> uh, look, um, I'm not uh, going to race right down to the bank with this check. <laughs> I, I really like to think that I've been doing a pretty good job of uh, feeding you kids and putting clothes on your back. Nobody's short of bubble gum or nail polish. So uh, I don't need any help from your mother. I'll see you. But, Dad, you promised to think about it. I will. It's already spinning around in my little brain. Think fast. Every time the president makes a speech, the dollar's worth less. <laughs> you know, I, I wish I never got this letter. Why can't the mail in Portland be like the mail everywhere else in the United States? Four years late. <laughs> well, the quicker you get back to me, the better. I know I've got to find some nitwit crazy enough to take over our all-night talk show. <laughs> Bye. No way, Morgan. I did it last night. Once was enough. Well, it was worth a try. You got to be crazy about weirdos, but it pays well. Why would anybody want to go to work from 10 at night till 7 in the morning? Oh, come on. Just try it for a while, okay? You know something? I'm getting sick of people telling me what to do. You're offering me insomnia. Marion sends me $10,000. The girls have practically picked out a house, and my father, the carpenter, is building me a shelf I don't need. Uh, Ma Marion sent you $10,000? What for? Well, to make a down payment on a house. Well, that is pretty terrific of her. Well, leave it to a woman to say something like that. <laughs> what did you want me to say? Morgan, an ex-wife, does not send her ex-husband money. Why not? It, uh, it goes against nature. I mean, everything in life has a function. A husband's function is to earn money. A wife's function is to take it away from him. <laughs> I mean, these scissors, they have a function. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. I'm just a little confused right now. I, I was brought up to believe that a man provided for the family without any help from a woman. Well, who brought you up? Fred Flintstone? <laughs> Larry, you know, you sound like you're back in the caveman days. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Don't knock the caveman. He provided for the family. The cave woman sat home and did what cave women did. Oh, made babies. And once in a while, a fur shirt. <laughs> 
Larry, let me tell you something. If I were your ex-wife, my advice to you would be to put aside your stupid male pride, think about my daughters, and accept my very generous offer. And if you were, Marion, the first thing that I would want to know is where did you get the $10,000? I don't think that's any of your business. Well, I think a husband is entitled to know where his wife gets that kind of money to throw around. For your information, I got it as a bonus from the travel agency. You remember, the one you said wouldn't last a week? Oh, that's swell, Marion. Throw that up to me again. Listen, what do I need money for? I'm still young, single, attractive. Men are constantly giving me gifts. So why shouldn't I help somebody less fortunate than myself? Look, if I am less fortunate than you, it's because the lady I work for is too cheap to pay me more money. <laughs> to know for a fact that your boss offered you extra money to do an all-night talk show, but you turned it down because you'd rather spend your night sleeping. You know something, Marion? You haven't changed a bit. Oh, boy, am I glad I divorced. <laughs> Marion, when you see Morgan... Tell her the glass in her window is broken. <laughs> I like that house. Oh, it's you? beautiful. I like this house, Grandpa, didn't you? Uh, you got to stay away from Spanish style. Remember the Alamo. <laughs> well, how about that old house over on Marine Drive? No, nope. I went up in the attic and looked around. Never buy a house with termite droppings. Why not? One big win, you got a mortgage and a load of firewood. <laughs> well, I like this yellow house, the pretty trees in front. Who I could have moved in today. Stucco. Stucco doesn't last. You never see a coffin made of stucco. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. I'll heat up some coffee for you. Why don't you make some fresh coffee, Diane? Yes, a man that's about to buy a house deserves fresh coffee. Anything to warm me up. Well, if you had a house in the fireplace, you wouldn't be cold, Dad. Grandpa, tell him about the house near the park. Bad design. You had to go through the furnace to get to the kitchen. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Uh, you guys have been out looking for houses? There's an old saying, why not? <laughs> Ruthie, tell your dad about the house with four fireplaces. Grandpa, that's $800,000. That's the asking price. I'll get them down to $30,000. <laughs> They've got their hearts set on a house, Lawrence. Pop, please. I'd like to talk to my daughters, okay? No. <laughs> Kids, um, I spent most of this afternoon going back and forth about your mother's money. But I finally made up my mind. I can't accept it. Why? Well, look, I know how much this means to you, Diane, and to you, Ruthie, but, I mean, e even if I wanted to endorse the check, I, I couldn't get my fingers to move the pen. Well, hold the pen still and we'll move the check around. <laughs> Boy, that's a lot of zeros. Get out of that! Look, I'm sorry, girls, okay? Oh, Dad. I'd run to my room, too, but I don't have one. <laughs> For your information, you got two unhappy daughters in there. You know what I'm going to do? As soon as I finish those shelves, I'm going to build you a booby hatch. <laughs> Any man that would tear up a $10,000 check belongs in a ha-ha hotel. Pop, I feel bad enough. Please, just stay out of this. I am staying out of it. I won't say another word. Thank you. Should have taken the money. <laughs> oh, it's no big deal. I took money from your mother once. She died before I could tell her about it. <laughs> mm. Humor your father. He hasn't got both oars in the water. Uh, I'm going to tape Mom's check together just in case you change your mind, okay? The bank will never know. Uh, look, Diane, you deserve an explanation, honey. Now, look, if we were to use your mother's money plus what we have, that, that would make a down payment. But what about the monthly mortgage payments? I mean, I'd have to come up with a ton of money, don't you see? Are you sure it's just not your pride? Well, maybe. Partly. I mean, it's, it, it's hard to explain how I feel. Well, then I'll explain how I feel. See, I'm not saying it's so crowded around here we can't breathe. And I know lots of kids would like to have just what we have. In fact, I know we have it pretty good. 
What if you took mom's money? It could be so much better. Honey, I'm your father. I'll take care of you. My mother should be allowed to help. Well, if you won't take it from her mother, take it from mine. <laughs> Ruthie, will you just clam up and do your little puzzle? See? You don't even have the privacy to argue. She means express her viewpoint. I mean argue and yell and scream. Dad, you do so much for us. I, I appreciate that. Well, now you see, Dad, wasn't that a nice thing for her to say? Ruthie, shut up. <laughs> and that wasn't such a nice thing for her to say. <laughs> Dad, am I wrong in being glad Mom wants to do something for us? Honey, you have a wonderful mother. But just try and see my... I just thought of something. <laughs> what now? Chrysler let somebody give him money. Why shouldn't you take money? <laughs> You're as broke as Chrysler. <laughs> Pop, why don't we just have Marion send the money to Chrysler? <laughs> You're too proud, Lawrence. Remember, a peacock is only a chicken with pride. <laughs> Look, girls, I know that you would like more room. So would I. I. I just don't see how I can swing it. Maybe Mom will help with the payments. Well, yeah, Dad. Why don't you call her? I'll get on the phone for you right now. Ruthie. I'll call Collect. Honey, just dial information and ask them how to keep a 14-year-old quiet. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm not going to take anything from your mother. Well, why, Dad? Is it because Mom sent the money? I think you're mad at her, and this is the way you're punishing her. Look, I'm making a decision for our family. I am not punishing anybody. Yes, you are. Us. If you want me, I'll be in a crowded room with my sister. <laughs> what are you doing? Want to pack? Going home. The girls need more room. Pop, put down that suitcase. You'll have to finish the shelves yourself. And don't hold the nails in your teeth. You'll break the enamel. <laughs> Come on, cut it out, Pop. Where will you go? Might visit your ex-wife. She seems to be loaded. <laughs> hey, look, Pop. I'm wise to your little tricks. It won't work. Lawrence, buy him the house. Dad, a house is a big responsibility. I don't make enough to take that risk. Take out a 30-year mortgage. What's a young man like you afraid of? I'm 74, and I'm not afraid of a 30-year mortgage. <laughs> then you buy the house. I would if somebody gave me $10,000. Lawrence, nobody ever lost on a house. Except maybe Adam and Eve, and they didn't have anybody to sell to. <laughs> Come in. Safe? <laughs> Safe. Listen, I'm sorry I butted into your affairs, and I'm sorry I yelled at you, and just forget about the glass in my door. It's coming out of your salary. <laughs> hey, Morgan, I'm, I'm glad you came by. Is that, is that all-night job still open? Why? Well, suddenly I'm interested. I'm going for a house. Well, what made you change your mind? Well, I... Oh, okay, okay. This, this is me. Filled with pride. Uh, these, these are my daughters. Very upset. This is my father in there packing. So, I uh, swallow my pride. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you decided to take the money. You see, now I'm really going to need that nighttime job so I can make the monthly payments. Oh, no. Listen, Larry, I've been thinking about that all night show. It's murder. I won't let you take it. Oh, wait a minute. When I was in the office today, you were looking for some nitwit like me. <laughs> Just a temporary nitwit. Larry, look, you can't possibly hold down that job permanently and do your regular show. Can't we ever agree on anything, Morgan? I need more room for my kids. Well, if you take the all-night show, they'll have more room. You'll never be here. Look, whether this is the right thing or the wrong thing, it is what I'm going to do. Now, do I get the job? You got it. Morgan, you try saying hot licky's home of heavenly hamburgers at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm sorry I am yelling. I'm, I'm, I'm tired, and I, and I haven't seen my kids in a week. No, no thanks. I don't need any company. Wendell, Wendell is here. <laughs> Wendell, the president of my fan club? <laughs> yeah. Look, um, the news will be off in a few minutes, and, and I'll be back on the air again. So can we talk about this in the morning? Okay, goodbye. Wendell, haven't you got someplace else to go? <laughs> well, 
I could go to the downtown mission, but I hate it there. They wash me. Haven't been there lately, have you? Uh, look, pal, I got a show to do, okay? Okay. Good evening. This is David Brinkley. Excuse me, David. They need you in Washington. Get that, would you? If it's for me, tell them I'm on a break. K-L-O-W, can I help you? Dad? Ruthie, what are you doing up this late? Oh, I couldn't sleep. Neither could Diane. Hi, Dad. Send us a picture. We forgot what you look like. Dad, we miss you. I mean, we never even get to see you at breakfast anymore. We go to school, then you go to work, then we come home from school, then you eat downtown, then you do your nighttime radio show, and then we go to bed. I mean, we could be six months pregnant before you'd notice. <laughs> I miss you too, honey. I, I wish I was there with you right now. I tell you what, I'll try to get home before you guys go to school. Now, now you go to sleep. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> you know, it's nice to having you here, Wendell. I know. Oh, back to work. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, we're back with Larry Alder, and uh, right now I'd like to play another tune and dedicate it to my good friend Wendell. Uh, it's I Left My Heart in San Francisco and uh, My Liver in Portland. Dad said he tried to get here before we left for school. Yeah, I hope he does. You know, it feels weird going off to school every day without Dad saying goodbye. Diane, do you think we pushed Dad a little too hard about this house thing? Yeah, I guess we did. I never should have written Mom those letters. Hey, hadn't you girls better be off to school? Well, we're kind of stalling, hoping Dad might show up. Yeah, kind of miss having him around myself. Nobody to fight with. <laughs> Good morning. Dad! Hey, I'm glad I got here before you guys left. Huh? Glad you're home, son. Want to fight? <laughs> Pop, I don't want to fight with the best night watchman the Alder household ever had. <laughs> Look, um, kids, these uh, past few nights I've had a chance to do a lot of thinking. Look, Dad. Uh, let me finish, honey. Now, the, uh, the real cost of this house isn't money. No, the real cost of this house is going to be not seeing each other. I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to pay that price. Neither are we, Dad. The house can wait. Thank you, honey. Because it's going to have to. Because I really miss you girls too much. You too, Pop. Oh, bull, Pucky. <laughs> Oh, I mean it. Now, you're going to stay. And we're going to let your mother know that we're not going to keep the money. And then before Grandpa builds another room under the stove, <laughs> we're going to find a larger apartment. Can we afford it, Dad? Well, I can always get a job working nights. <laughs> oh, boy, am I tired. Why don't you get some sleep, Dad? We're going to get to school. Yeah. Love you both. Bye-bye. Bye, Dad. Have a nice day. You too. You earned your rest, Lawrence. I am going to sleep for a week. 